Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me say this. Um, you have a big fight. It's for the WBC Silver Lightweight title, and it's taking place at the O2 Arena in the United Kingdom. Right in fighter Kevin Mitchell's backyard. He's fighting Daniel Estrada, who has fought the majority of his fights in Mexico. Right when he ventured outside of Mexico, it wasn't too far, he fought Omar Figueroa for the WBC lightweight title in Carson, California at the StubHub Center. Right, so just to understand Estrada doesn't have any experience in traveling across the Atlantic Ocean to fight on foreign soil, right? He's been fighting close to home. When you see a fighter have to cross the ocean for the first time to fight before thousands of fans who are going to be rooting for the hometown hero, that should be something that raises your eyebrow. But let's talk about other things that should raise your eyebrow. Kevin Mitchell had an opportunity to become the mandatory contender for one of these lightweight titles. And he fought a fighter named Maduma, Ghislaine Maduma. By the way, that's a name you need to remember. Right? Ghislaine Maduma, right? Well, Mitchell fought a guy named Maduma. And just to understand, Mitchell made weight, right? Contrary to reports, he made weight. Here was his problem. The sanctioning body only allows a 10-pound weight gain between the weigh-in and the fight. Right? They don't want guys hydrating like, let's say, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. routinely does. Right? They want you to fight at a weight that's close to the weight, within 10 pounds of the weight, at which you weighed in. Incredibly, Kevin Mitchell, who has a problem making weight, could not stay within 10 pounds of the weight at which he weighed in. In other words, this guy was completely drained of water, right? Him making 135 was so artificial that he couldn't avoid surpassing 145 within less than 24 hours, right? So, just understand, Mitchell then goes on to beat Maduma, but Let's look closely at that fight, folks. Understand that Mitchell's losing on the scorecards at the time of the stoppage. Understand the stoppage is a little controversial. It's true, but Duma ran out of gas. No question about it. But just understand that stoppage is a little controversial, right? If Maduma pops straight up, no issue. Maduma pops up, makes a move, staggers a little bit, fight's over. Right? This is a fight in which Maduma is winning well into the later rounds. The point, though, is Mitchell was getting methodically outboxed early in that fight. If you're someone who likes to keep track of fighters and who believes that the best value in boxing is in taking a fighter who has blown it in a fight, right? who has had a bad experience, learns from that experience, gets it together, retools, and comes back and has the talent, right? Then you need to look at Ghislaine Maduma. But Mitchell, I'll just say this. The storm clouds are out, right? This guy can't even take advantage of opportunities where they say, if you win, you're the mandatory. That's why he's fighting for the silver title, not the world title here, right? 135 is a problem for him. Now, what that tells me is 
if the other guy can force him to spend a lot of energy, if the other guy can force him to use stamina to move around the ring, if the other guy makes it tough for Mitchell, if this isn't an early KO where Mitchell shows up, he's barely made weight, he blows out the other guy, we never see him tired, we never see him stressed, right? If this is that fight, Mitchell, Mitchell's condition doesn't matter. But if this is a different fight, where the other guy is using length, the other guy is slick, the other guy can fight on his back foot, the other guy has moves, the other guy knows how to clinch, the other guy knows how to win the slow rounds, how to take this into the later rounds without being completely tired like Maduma. If the other guy can win rounds in second and third gear, and not always have to be in fourth gear to win rounds, right? Mitchell could find himself in trouble. Now, I don't understand these odds. Now, let me stop right here. To folks just stumbling on my videos, understand I take risks, right? I'm not here trying to get a great winning percentage. I'm actually here just trying to make money from the casino. Right, so often I will recommend plays that are against the mainstream. Right, what I'm about to say is very risky. You need to understand that. This is the gambler's advisory part of the internet. Mitchell is a three to one favorite and he's fighting at home. What could possibly go wrong? Well, let me just say. On a value play, I like Daniel Estrada in this fight. Right, I'm going to hedge the play with Mitchell by KO. Just understand, Estrada is a greater than 2-1 to one underdog and has never crossed the Atlantic Ocean to fight on British soil before in his life. But this guy is taller then Kevin Mitchell. He's 5'10 and a half. He can fight on his back foot. He's a boxer puncher. He has a greater than 60% KO ratio. The guy has a very nice jab. Mitchell isn't a smotherer. He's really a chess player who likes to come in, who likes to play chess for a while, and then who wants to pick his spots, come inside with heavy left hooks, right? Come inside with big punches, but he picks his spots. He's not James Kirkland. He's not going to rush in and try to force the issue, right? So to me, that's going to give a guy with better pure boxing skills an opportunity. If you look at the Omar Figueroa film, the fight that Estrada lost, and that was for the world title, right? You're going to see that Figueroa does a James Kirkland. He throws caution to the wind. He's on his front foot. By the way, Figueroa barely made way. He's on his front foot, and he's rushing in on Estrada. I don't think that's Kevin Mitchell's game. Right, I think Mitchell is a guy who needs to pace himself in part because of weight problems. Right, I think he needs to pace himself. I think he's out of his comfort zone if he starts rushing around. Right, since he needs to pace himself, length and a jab and an ability to fight on your back foot, exactly what Daniel Estrada has, becomes an issue. Now, Estrada did get stopped by Omar Figueroa. Mitchell does hit hard. Mitchell certainly has a puncher's chance in this fight. But at these odds, I'm going to take Estrada at the greater than 2-1 to one odds. You're getting something like a 9-4 to four in some books. I like Estrada, the underdog, because my goal is to take money out of the casino. I like Estrada, the underdog, to win the fight hedged with Mitchell by KO. 
but understand what that means. The fight, after all, is in the United Kingdom. If this gets to the later rounds, and if you end up with the kind of judges who we had in some recent Ricky Burns fights, right? Um, you can imagine the crowds are going to be screaming for Kevin Mitchell, right? Understand if it goes to a decision and Mitchell wins the decision, you lose it all, right? That's the risk I'm willing to take. I like Estrada to win hedge with Mitchell by KO. Let me hear from you. If you want to make the case for the favorite, please do. I hope you leave your comments here in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.